Hello, everyone. After a war, losers are always in the wrong. After Germany was defeated in World War One, all war's guilt fell on Germany. Treaty of Versailles, 1919, signed with controversial provisions in history, it required Germany was the only one to accept the responsibility of Germany and allies for causing all the loss and damage during the war. So. Germany was repatriated 132 billion gold marks, roughly equivalent to 269 billion U.S. dollar. On the other hand, they also had to give up their colonies and cut down their armies, which made Germany fall into a crisis. Plus, the government printed more money while the mark was depreciating, leading to the worst hyperinflation in the history. In 1932, 42 billion mark was equal to one U.S. cent. The future of the Germans seemed to be in the dark, but only 20 years later, they rose to become the leading powerful country in the world and took troops to invade Europe. Why can't they do that? After World War One, the German monarchy was collapsed and a new state was established. It's called Weimar Republic. Facing a bad economic situation, Weimar Republic declared they cannot have the ability to pay war debt. So the French and Belgian troops occupied the main German industrial area, which was the ruler with the determination to get compensation. The government ordered workers to go on strike, closing coal mines and iron factories, which caused Germany's economy to rapidly decline. In 1923, the new prime minister Gustav Stresemann was elected. He ordered people to reopen factories, and at that time, he carried out the Dawn's Plan. After that, Germany negotiated with European countries so that they could create a chance for Germany's economic improvement to have more money to pay. The plan was improved in 1924. Source of capital was lent by the United States. Germany restarted their industrial sector and gradually recovered. However, in 1929, the U.S. economy fell into crisis, which caused banks to collect all debts from German companies. Many businesses were no longer capital to work, leading to a dizzying increase in the unemployment rate, and the country's economy continued to fall into recession. German's middle class was bearing the brunt of the economic crisis. They were getting more and more tired, and no longer trusted the leaders of the government. So they looked for new leaders. At that time, the Stalinist Communist Party in Germany was growing, but it was not supported by the middle class. That was an advantage to the Nazi Germany drew them to its side. In 1932, the Nazi Party became the largest political party in the parliament. After a short struggle for power, Hitler was elected president of Germany in January 1933. After that, he began to eliminate all political opposition and consolidate his power, which was dictatorship of Nazi Party. Hitler's first job was rapidly reducing the unemployment rate. The solution was very simple: he took them in a concentration camp and gave them whatever job they did. He also confiscated property of Jews and deprived them of their citizenship. Jews who were unemployed and they weren't listed in the statistics. It also included prisoners and women. That created the illusion of economic miracles under Hitler period. The number of unemployment decreased from six million in 1933 to only 300,000 in 1939. Thanks to the deceitful numbers, Hitler received a lot of people's trust. However, it doesn't mean Hitler did nothing for the Nazi economy. He helped many people escape unemployment by sending them to serve in the army. He also built more weapons factories to create more jobs opportunities. In addition, the Nazi Germany invested a lot of money in the construction of roads, bridges, and public constructions. They hoped all their hard work would pay off after they had conquered Europe in the future. The most famous construction of that period was the Autobahn highway system, which helped people felt proud of it when they were able to drive around the country. It also would become a route for the mobilization of forces and supplies for the army.
There was a good thing under Hitler. Nazi Germany's science and technology was very developed. They prided of themselves with more than half of the world's Nobel prizes with many patents. Many modern things were produced, such as televisions, electronic computers, microscopes, rifles, jets, rockets, tanks, etc. The Nazi Germany was also interested in welfare policies for the people, such as buying accident insurance. People would care unlimited health. Maternity leave lasted 12 weeks and was fully paid. The Nazi Germany also produced a cheap car that anyone could afford. Basically, each worker would deposit some salary into the fund until enough to pay for the car. After that, they could possess that car. However, no one actually received the car because their money was transferred to the weapons factories. All things make a unified, which was developed and powerful in German. In 1937, production and national income doubled compared to 1933. Overall, Germany had completely changed. And it's all just a shiny surface. Nazi Germany did not care about promotion of foreign trade and always overspended on their budget. In 1939, government income was 15 billion rice mark, but they spent more than 30 billion and all 40 billion rice marks. In summary, Germany under Hitler was an exaggeration of economic power. The fact that was nothing. Most of the money was invested in military reconstructions for the purpose of revenge during World War One to regain what was lost. But they lost everything in World War Two. The video ends here. See you then in the next video. Thank you.